The Webflow Designer is set up for responsive design. And we know that the difference between designing in Webflow and designing in pretty much every other tool is that you get the same granular control, all the options in terms of CSS units and dimensions, a one-to-one -one relationship between the design and the code. In fact, if we want to watch the code write itself, we can open up CSS Preview. Adjust styling, it's updating in real time. But what we want to cover today is the specific distinction between responsive breakpoints and fluidity. Because it's not enough that we just click from breakpoint to breakpoint. We have to solve for all the devices that exist between these breakpoints. Devices like the iPhone 11 Pro. The difference here... Mm, not anymore. We're recording. They just released the new iPhone. The iPhone 12. And the Pro. And the Pro, Pro Max. Max. They also have the Mini. Really? Yeah. The difference here, and this applies to all mobile devices, is that they all have different widths. Now, the iPhone 12 product line has slightly different pixel values. There's so many iPhones, there's like 20 of them. So to test our design on all kinds of widths, we're going to test these fringe pixel values. First, we'll test while designing, then while previewing, these first two are in the Webflow Designer, and finally, in a published site in the browser's viewport. And this will go fairly quickly. For the first part, in any design, we can grab right at the edge, right at the edge of the canvas, and click and drag to resize. This will simulate different widths, more narrow viewport. Then we repeat this process on each breakpoint. On tablet, three columns might be a bit dense as it gets narrower. Also, notice how it shows common device widths at the bottom. But here, let's experiment with deleting columns. Let's go in and change the number of columns in our grid. Let's delete a column. and. When we do, let's hit escape, we have two columns left. Looks good on tablet. Let's go over to mobile landscape. And we can always change more than grids. We can select something like the headings and change the font size, just holding down option or alt and dragging to adjust the size of our typography. And since we're using classes, all elements with this class applied are being affected. But here's the thing to remember. We know that when we style something on the base breakpoint, that change cascades downwards towards smaller devices, and it cascades upwards if you've added larger breakpoints. So on the base breakpoint, we had three columns. And because we changed the number of columns on tablet, it affected the smaller breakpoints, mobile landscape and mobile portrait. And the font size change, we did that on mobile landscape, so it only affected that breakpoint and the smaller breakpoint. Again, we can click and drag to test fluidity on different device widths. Back to Mobile Portrait. At this width, two might work. In fact, if we grab the canvas and resize again, they actually do look fine on the iPhone 12 product line. But again, let's test fluidity on smaller devices. And it is pretty dense, especially as the canvas gets narrower. Let's go in, edit our grid, and remove one more column so it's one across. So we can click through our breakpoints to get a quick preview, but we always want to grab the edge of the canvas and resize to test fluidity on all the widths between each explicit breakpoint. So that's testing while designing. There might be an easier and faster way, because even if we're back on our base breakpoint, we can go into preview mode. And if we click and drag to resize here- This is here, unbelievable. What's up, Creamer? They have a new HomePod. Good. It's miniaturized. That's excellent. It's adorable. Can we come back to this? Yeah, I think they're about to announce AirTags. They won't announce AirTags. AirPods Studio? That won't happen. At least an iMac redesign. No. But at any time, from preview mode, you can grab the edge of the canvas and drag to resize through all the breakpoints, smaller and larger, which is great if you're on a smaller screen and you need to simulate what a huge display might look like. Finally, we have the browser version of doing this. We can publish our project, here we're using the webflow.io staging domain, and we'll do this in three browsers, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. In Chrome, we can go in and inspect, we're just right-clicking, inspect to access DevTools, and if we click the tiny little devices icon, we can now simulate different device widths. This is great for checking our published site. Same in Safari. Remember, in Safari, you need to go to Preferences under Advanced, and once you're there, make sure you've enabled the Develop menu to access this. But on any site, you can go up to Develop and enter Responsive Design Mode. Same kinds of sizing options here, a good way to test in browser. Now, what about Firefox? Well, similar to Chrome, go to the site, right-click, go down to Inspect, and when you're there, click the tiny little devices icon. 
Just like Chrome, you can click and drag to check responsiveness and fluidity, how fluidly the design responds on all kinds of device widths. So three ways to check responsiveness and fluidity. While you're designing, while you're in preview mode, and published in the browser itself. Do you have to do all three? That's up to you. For responsive design, it's a pretty good practice to test on different browsers, different devices when you can. But in most cases, it's a good bet to check responsiveness inside Webflow as you're designing and previewing, and then check your responsive design on different browsers when you're proofing and finalizing your work. As for Greamer, 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 not everything is responsive.